Hi, in this video I'll be looking at how to take reports that are designed in Excel and publish them to the web channel so that users can come in and view the same reports but through the browser. And these reports can be parameterized as well. This particular report is a sales by territory and you can see that there's some parameters on the side, a table and a chart. There's also another style of report that I'll be showing, which is, uh, in this case, a profit and loss. And it's different from the first in that there's lots of aggregated cells that are bringing back these values for sales, expenses, etc. Again, it's parameterized. Once they're published to the web, we'll just display the print area so that we don't pick up the filters on the side. Let's switch to the browser. So we can see what these reports look like once they're published. Here's the sales by territory. And you can see that we have the table and the chart. If we change the values in the filters up the top, you can see that the, the table is recalculated and also the chart. The same can be said for the profit and loss report. Here we've parameterized the period, so we can change the period another period and you can see here that it's actually displaying the filter values and also recalculating the results. These spreadsheets can also be caged so that if many users are coming in the actual spreadsheet is not recalculated each time someone views the report for a specified number of hours for example. Let's go back to the Excel workbook and start the process for publishing a report. As you may have noticed in the, the web channel, we had up the top of the report filters for company and the date from and to. To make that work, we need to give the, the values that we want to change in the workbook a name range. So I'm just going to click on the, the cell uh, C7 in this example. And you can see I've given it a name range of company. We'll go to the date from and to, and I'm going to call the date from uh, report date. Just hit enter and report date to. This will become important later when we publish it to the web and we want to tie these values into what's been entered in the filters of the uh, web channel. It's done by, this, by synchronizing on these names. So once we've done that, we can then save this workbook. I'm just going to save it as a different name. So I'll call it number three. And then we can go to Publisher. I'll create a new report in Publisher. I'll allocate the reporter group. And I'll say it's sales by territory. It's by territory. So that's the normal process for creating a, re a report. We'd normally go on to defining a query, but in this case, let's go to the Excel tab. And what we'll do is import the file that we've just created. Now, if I was to double click on this file right now, I would get an error message saying that the file is currently opened and locked. So we need to close this Excel file. So let's close that and we'll go back to Publisher and let's try and import that again. So we'll import the file and there'll be a series of prompts now that will try and help us set the correct settings. So the report type should be set to Excel. We'll say yes, please do that for us. The next thing is just a reminder saying that Excel workbooks can take some time to calculate. So it recommends that we set the cache to three hours, for example. So I'm going to say OK to that. And so let's go to the caching tab and enable caching and set that to three hours. This means that if someone was to use the report with the exact same filter criteria, the report wouldn't have to be recalculated. We could use the cached version and show them that immediately. 
The next step that we need to do is to find the filters that will appear across the top of the report. So we'll go to Edit Query and we'll select the system that we want to get base the filters on. In this case, I'm using Great Plains, which is a financial system. And I'll try and go back to the same base table as used in the report because that will help me get to the, the same types of filters that are going to drive this Excel workbook. So I've gone back to sales and I, in the report it's filtering on the company so that's what I need and it also had a field called document date. So I'm just searching on that and I'm just going to put that up into the filters. In this case here we're not really interested in outputting values because it's just the filters that we're interested in. So I'm just put output any arbitrary column into the outputs. And there's our company. I'm not interested in showing the history to the users. So I'm not going to hide that. And the transaction number, I'll just set that to all and hide that as well. And the document date, let's rename that. Let's just change the name and call that report. Sorry, I'll change the description and call it report date. Now here's the important part. We gave the cells in the Excel workbook name ranges and the first one was called company. So we should give this filter on company the same name, not description, but name. So we'll change the name and we'll call it company, exactly how we entered it in the workbook. And we'll come to the second one, which is the report date. And we'll change the name on that as well and call it report date. I've given the report date a name of report date. And this will be the from and the to value of the report date. Let's give it some defaults. So I'm just going to enter in uh, a, a, some dates. I'm going to make it relative to today. As I'm using a demonstration database, I just need to go back into the past and into the future so we get some data. And it's going to do these values. What will happen is that the report date in the workbook will pick up this value and the report date 2 will pick up the 2 value. Let's go OK to that and we'll have a look at the Excel tab again. We've got some choices here to show all the workbooks or a specified sheet name. Let's select the active sheet name only and go apply. The next step is to go to the web channel and actually view the report and see what it looks like. What I'll do is I'll just copy the links so we can go directly to it. And here's the link to the report. So just copy that and we'll go back to the browser and see if the new report is appearing. You can see that I haven't given the report a title so that's just a, a thin bar at the moment but let's submit the report. The report is taking longer than usual because it's actually calculating but once it's cached if I submit again the report will come back instantaneously. If you don't want to parameterize your report you could have the Excel spreadsheet just use formulas to, to extract values without any external parameterization. That's fine. In that case, you don't have to enable prompting on the reports. Just revising what we've covered, the most important points are that when you define the filters, that you give the filters the same names as the name ranges in the workbook. The reason is that these values here will be transferred to the same names in the workbook and then the workbook will be extracted based on whatever the current values are. Next I'd like to quickly take you through some more advanced options like creating drill throughs in Excel workbooks. Now normally you would create a drill through on the table and you would right click on it and that would take you through to the drill through. But since we've published a whole workbook, we've lost that sort of functionality. But instead, 
what we can do is tie icons and links into particular rows. In this case, I've created a drill through and placed an icon on the territory. And we can click on the territory, for example, and go through to another published report, pass the parameters and show the customers for that particular territory. Let's have a quick look and see how this is done. This is the original workbook that was published. And let's have a look at the query behind this table. You can see here is the query and it's referencing those name ranges that we created. And there is a expression here that I've created to link to another published report called Excel drill through in the web channel. And it's passing through the territory that's on the row to that report. To build this expression up, I've come into the HTML section and I've used the link to another report using icon image. And just change the, the name of the report and the name of the filters that I'd like to change and then pass through the values from the rows. So for example here we want to pass the sales territory to make sure that it's the same sales territory as is displayed on the row. And then we'll just change that for example if that was the name of the filter. Any HTML content that you place in the Excel spreadsheet won't appear correctly when you're in Excel, but once it's published to the web, these types of links, for example, will appear correctly because now it's in a browser and it can display the content correctly. If you have pivot tables and other content, uh, they'll also be displayed through the web channel. What won't be supported is things like macros and VBA code. So in summary, when taking Excel workbooks and publishing them to the web, think about what sorts of things you'd like to parameterize and give them names and then give them the same names in the filters that you've defined for the report. Also, don't forget to turn on caching as Excel's quite a heavy ap application. One other point is when using this functionality, Excel needs to be set up correctly on the server. There is a video that covers the installation and setup of Excel on servers. So refer to that for additional information.